hope it's not going to be too windy, but I'm actually on my way to New York. So I figured I'd make this video, which is going to be basically the part two or a continuation to what I was just talking about when it came down to uh, the last video I put up where if there's no such thing as magic pills, are there magic shrooms? See, I've spoken in many videos about how food has medicinal properties, such as like your herbs in your garden, uh, watermelons and whatnot. But I'm gonna use something in the words of uh, Bobby Hemming, where he said that basically you can have the same effects as something that you would consider medicinal and use it by drinking peach soda. And I find this very interesting because I've done extensive research on the works of Dr. Bruce Lipton on mind over matter. And when you listen to these main hermetic principles, you'll hear that the mind is all the universe is mental. But uh, when you hear the work the, the, from the works of Dr. Bruce Lipton, he mentioned that these yogis worked themselves up to a state of ecstasy. And they were able to drink strychnine and uh, basically intake uh, snake venom and nothing would happen to them. But this is a strong evidence of mind over matter. You'll also hear uh, the works of a French scientist that basically... Um, uh, you know, he, he, he basically had a robot <clears throat> and he put it in, in a pen and it was moving in random patterns. And then he basically laid uh, a few chicks and when they, uh, when they were basically born in existence, of course these chicks, he, he, he turned this robot on and what happened, these chicks actually uh, imprinted this robot as their mom so whatever they first see they imprint as their mom and what happened was that they wielded this robot to basically come to them and this robot stopped moving in random patterns and basically stayed with the chicks just moving back and forth and this is strong evidence for something called psychokinesis okay when you see something like this you'll also see that uh why I mentioned in the previous video, what you relieve your perception is basically your ultimate protection against anything. But the whole thing is that we're running on programs, automatic programs. We have a belief. So let's say, for example, you're told about these yogis that worked themselves up to a state of ecstasy and they drank strychnine. Would you go do that just because you heard of that? And do you actually say, oh, I believe this and then you'll go do it. But do you actually really believe it? That's the whole thing. So... It takes a real core, deep-rooted, strong belief for this to actually happen, right? So, when I say magic pills in the last video, basically the whole pharmaceutical industry is ran on placebo. And I'm not a medical doctor. I just make content, do your own research. None of this stuff is backed up by medical science or medical claims. So, do your own research. But this is basically a fact, you know? And... When you look at these shrooms, okay? And I made the examples of you know, uh, Jesus Christ being a healer and whatnot. Uh, you look at these shrooms, for one, they're called medicinal uh, shrooms or plant medicine. But what are you taking the medicine for? You know, you, you're always talking about healing and you're going through a healing process, but what are you healing from, right? So when you look at, for example, even in general, when you look at human diseases, they're categorized as human diseases like cancer, diabetes, and then when an animal that's not human, such as a cat or a dog, catches cancer or diabetes, we see that they contracted a human disease. But why do these human diseases exist, right? In actuality, first and foremost, to begin with, how did the cat catch a human disease? They were eating human food, right? So there was still a chemistry that was happening. And when you look at, for example, um, humans okay they have these diseases and they're categorized as human diseases because these are the, the diseases that you believe humans get but where did they actually come from so when you hear of uh you know christ laying his hand on somebody and curing that person it's still externalizing your power so you look at these shrooms as having some type of healing properties but did you actually really heal from anything all right what do you healing from at the core. I already know that there's 
neuroplasticity that happens. You can, you know, there, there's there's certain addictions that can be overcome, certain, you know, bipolar disorders and anxiety. And even then they'll tell you to be careful even ingesting the medicine if you have those things because you'll be prone to psychosis uh, if you have these conditions to begin with. So they would have to be monitored closely by uh, a trained scientist or a trained uh, professional. Right, which is why I made the example of the uh, of the you know cortisone shot. There's a a, a a real important property to it where you can actually use this for therapeutical purposes, but it doesn't mean for you to move your arm in a way where that inflammation was never there, because you'll actually do more harm than good. So, for example, these type of medicinal herbs will ha will give you a certain form of you know, let's say. The same way if you have a headache, you take a Tylenol, it kind of alleviated the pain of the headache, but did you ever really address the headache? You know, do you understand what a headache actually is? You think that your head is actually hurting, but that's actually coming from somewhere else. You know, you, your, your brain doesn't know how to feel pain, right? You're feeling the pain in your body, but why are you feeling it there and, and it's coming from somewhere else, right? Your brain is not really feeling the pain. Um, when you look at these uh, these shrooms, okay, they have medicinal properties. There's a chemistry that happens in the body. The same way there's a chemistry that happens in the body when you're eating, let's say, watermelons, uh, when you're eating herbs from your garden, they have a neutralizing frequency. However, with the uh, with the shrooms, they're doing it in a, in a, in a different way than let's say the medicinal herbs or properties that you would eat from like a watermelon. You see, when you're looking at these herbs and you have like, let's say some type of dysfunction in the body or an inharmonious chemistry, you're basically taking these herbs in the interest to neutralize this chemistry, but you're really not doing anything. You would just have to have discipline to, to actually stick to a diet uh, protocol so that it doesn't get in the way of the functions of what these herbs are supposed to do which is detox the body or neutralize the imbalanced chemistry same thing when you're eating watermelons or grapes right you will start worrying about these sugars but these are simple sugars but the moment you're eating them with let's say with something else like meats or breads or other sugars now you're complexing the chemistry even further so you would blame it on the sugars of the grapes when the grapes is actually a simple sugar it's important to take them by themselves this is even important to when you're ingesting these shrooms to not have food in your stomach, right? So you would actually have to have an empty stomach for you to assimilate it better. But in a macro level, you're supposed to actually do this for a period of weeks where you're purifying your mind, abstaining from sex, not eating animal products, maintaining a positive mindset, you know, setting an environment's important, the people you're hanging around with is important. But why? Because what matters is you, not the drug, the drug's a tool. The same way I made the example of the fat burner and all that in, you know, when you're, and, and I know it's two totally different scenarios, but they're very closely correlated with each other as far as like how you depend on one thing and look at it as a magic pill. If you're going to continue to eat Dunkin' Donuts and Popeyes, you're going to be a fat motherfucker. It doesn't matter how powerful the fat burner was. The shrooms is the same thing, right? But some people will say, oh, uh, the, that fat burner doesn't work, but you didn't use the tool properly. Some people may say, the shrooms didn't work or the shrooms worked so much but you'll praise it like you're praising a Christ-like figure outside of you or a fucking person who's influential outside of you who's just another person that you created in your reality you're externalizing your power and giving it away either way you put it you're having experiences with this mushroom that comes out of nature which is still part of the reality you would want to call a matrix when you say you want to come out the matrix now if you really think about it if you were really in a place that was trying to keep you here, all right, trust and believe this would be a lot more uh, harder to access than you think you uh, are having uh, a hard access to getting it right now. Some place, look, marijuana was illegal at one point. Now all of a sudden it's not illegal in most places. They're trying to use now the mushrooms for uh medicinal properties or for trained professionals to use them on people with like depression and whatnot but people who take antidepressants are taking these drugs with 
sort of like a sprinkle of like serotonin in their in their uh, in their body for them to kind of max, mask the, the symptoms of like depression but it shuts down the natural the body's natural ability to overcome these things it requires awareness right so a lot of people look at this these these medicinal uh, medicines the, the plant medicines and they would have to realize that instead of saying that I'm unhappy or depressed because I take these because I haven't taken these medicines maybe this is my my cure why don't you eliminate the middleman and just decide to feel that way to begin with like make up your mind or if you can't make up your mind then just change your mind you know because the whole thing is a lot of people even have this mentality toward money where they say oh I can't feel this because I don't have this kind of money I can't talk to girls because I don't have this much money so I don't feel secure like you you could just do whatever you want if you know how to do it and you make up your mind and decide to do it but that requires some a level of self-awareness and actual love for you to actually be able to realize that you could do these things without these vices outside of you right spiritual awakening you think that oh this is going to be the the key to a spiritual awakening is basically um in ingesting these plant medicines you have this uh some people have this perception toward death they think that death is the end or be all or they'll talk to dead people or the, or the dead because they think they're somehow more enlightened than you are here in this reality where you would have to acquire what you think you're supposed to acquire after that now for you to have that ability in even the afterlife or even when you ingest these shrooms are you able to do it yourself are you able to stimulate these chemicals within yourself before you ingest them exogenously See, the whole thing is you think that more is better because you hear that a, a, a large amount of DMT floods in your system when you die, but you don't get that amount until you die. You think that that's the amount you need to actually reach whatever your idea of spiritual heights are. You get what I'm saying? You produce a certain amount of it when you sleep. That's the right amount you need for you to have whatever experience you're trying to accomplish from any exogenous drug. And for one, I think the reason that you actually need this higher amount that your body can produce is because it's coming exogenously but if it was coming from within you and you were able to produce it at will and utilize this chemical with awareness you would realize that that small amount is as powerful as you would take in a heroic dose outside of you so look at b12 you could live off you know six micrograms of b12 and it would last almost a whole lifetime in your body if you have your proper functioning intrinsic factor in the body the B12 is a complex, you know, it has complex, there's many benefits to B12 in your body uh, being utilized properly. Red blood cell formation, carbohydrate metabolism, neurological functions, natural energy production, red blood cell formation, right? And I'm not a medical doctor, do your own research, none of this shit that I'm saying matters. But take it how you will. But you, you, you can't, so if a person can't process B12, what do they do? They look for it outside of themselves, right? So when I just said that you can live off seven micrograms, you're looking for, you know, dosages in the amounts of 1,500 to 2,500 micrograms or even 5,000. Some people even inject B12 and they're still deficient. Why is that? It's because they're not utilizing it properly, right? But do you need that amount to begin with? Find out why you're not even utilizing it properly to begin with. And find out what the natural sources of it even is. If you were to actually uh, take it externally, would you need it in a supplemental form in a pill? All right? Where it's isolated and processed a certain way. Or can you get your body primed and ready for you to intake it from food sources that come from nature, which you are part of it. You are part of this matrix. Right? Then you can actually assimilate the amount that you would need and it would stay in your system for an extended period of time you know and this comes down to like you know probiotics viruses bacteria all that flesh shit. you hear what i'm saying but the whole reason for this video is to try to like look you can have certain issues outside of yourself right 
And a lot of people want to do rituals to get rid of like certain addictions and whatnot. Is there a way where you can accomplish this through will and will alone? You complain about free will or not having free will or people infringing on your free will. But do you have enough willpower to act on will and will alone? To not need vices outside of you at all. To try to reach these chemicals activation in your body without needing anything outside of you. Some people say, I need to lose weight. What can I take? Well, how about you don't take anything? You're trying to lose weight. So how about you just stop putting things in your body that add weight, right? Try to detox your body, right? By shutting your pie hole, right? How do you reach spiritual heights, right? You got too much baggage, too much clutter in your mind. Well, how about you just disconnect from everything? Stop listening to shit to begin with, right? And sit with yourself and being in silent, you're purging a lot, you'll start to notice what comes up and what's in your mind, right? Because So from the accounts I've heard, when you take these psychoactive drugs, they tell you that the best effects you get for, you know, uh, uh, brain or rewiring of your, of your brain is to basically lay down and close your eyes and observe the visuals because this is what's basically arising from your own mind, from your own mind's eye. Because... When you when you have your eyes open, you'll have the visualizations, but you're you're basically getting still external stimuli to some extent. So it's the same way when you you know when you go into sensory deprivation techs and whatnot. You see how a lot of people can't even be in that state; they get anxiety and whatnot. People get anxiety being under the psychoactive drug or the psilocybin called DMT or the the mushrooms, right? Why is that? It's sort of a sensory deprivation. You feel like you're losing yourself. But this is the whole thing. You didn't take anything outside of you. So if you put yourself in that state with a certain uh, 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 piece of technology that was built for that purpose, but you can actually accomplish that even without that. That's the whole thing. You can accomplish that without that. Just like I've mentioned that you can meditate without binaural beats, right? A lot of people think they can't do it without binaural beats. Some people can't work out, let's say, go to the gym without a pre-workout. Because it became a vice, it became a crutch, it became something that they have to depend on. You know, I'm not for or against none of these things. You have to understand. I make journals. These are journals for myself. I see what mindset I'm in now, and I'm sure this benefits certain people. All right, because it gets you to think in, in from a different perspective. So now, do your own research. I'm not a medical doctor. Okay? If you do the drugs and you enjoy the drugs, that's very good. I have the, I'm in possession of these drugs. Okay? And I'm very aware of it. Now, I'm doing a lot of, you know, let's say, homework, but I'm also doing, and I'm not, see, the thing is, I don't want to overthink it either. You know what I'm saying? So I'm, I'm maintaining a very strong balance when it comes to that. But either way, I'm going to enjoy the process and I'm going to enjoy what comes next. That's the whole point of anything. The whole the whole you know point I made even in the last video when I said that you know if, if you if you have if you're poor, you know, you're really not poor. It's just a symptom of poor consciousness. That's all it is. But if you get handed a blessing, you won't know what to do with it if you're not aware of the poor consciousness to begin with and change that through will and will alone. I mean, there's no magic pill. A lot of people will offer you programs online, financial groups. You know, this system will, you know, get you out of poverty mindset. This system will help you, uh, you know, live financially free. There's a lot of people who offer these systems. This is just the same fucking way that you look at these drugs and these medicinal drugs. It's got to all start from you though. Because you can go there and you can fucking feel all motivated, but you come back and nothing's changed. It's because you haven't changed. But you got a nice kick. It was a nice experience. You got a little taste of what the information was like. But would you be able to repeat it and and and, re, and without regurgitating it, but repeat it from a wisdom space, not a knowledge space? So I, I, I'm just. That's all I wanted to cover for this video. If you like, like it, and we'll talk soon.